We need to, at some point, have this conversation with ourselves where we give ourselves permission to love who we would like to love and be who we would like to be. Breaking with, I guess, the roles and rules that society and culture lays out for us. My name is Saskia Vogel. I am a Swedish to English literary translator and the author of Permission. Permission is about, one, giving ourselves the permission to be. One of the themes that I find really important is um, the question of, of desire and pleasure. I think the question of whether or not Permission is a feminist book is really interesting. I'm a feminist, and so when I write, of course I'm always writing with my politics, but I think uh, I didn't write the book with a sort of maybe didactic political agenda. I um, was more interested in sort of questions of compassion and openness. Echo, the main character, I think has a early break with um, how she's able to think about herself in terms of what she wants and what she desires, like physically and erotically. And uh, the book is in a way uh, a journey for her to find, to, to re-establish that connection, to re-establish the dialogue that was broken at an early age about who she would want to love and how she wants to love. Echo is a character who came to me from a lot of questions that took shape um, when I was living in Los Angeles in my 20s. We were all familiar with the kind of power structures that were revealed in, in Hollywood um, after the Weinstein scandal. And I, I remember sensing that kind of strange economy of like sex and the body and the sort of transactional nature of relationships. Um, at the same time, I was also uh, uh, close to the BDSM community and um, I always found it such a remarkable contrast between sort of the world that I was running around in as a sort of 20-something with some sort of vague interest in being around Hollywood and this like social life I had where I, you know, I never felt objectified, I always felt very free. I don't know that BDSM specifically represents something for Echo, what she finds in a BDSM context with Orly, the dominatrix, who she's both fascinated and probably a little bit in love with. Um, she finds a very well-structured place. Um, and I think inside that structure, it's one of the first times in a long time that she was able to feel kind of safe and also able to explore and maybe try out new, um, new ways of being that she hadn't uh, been able to before. Writing Echo and Orly was really a challenge. One of the biggest challenges about portraying their relationship was um, specifically to do with Orly. I wanted to make sure that I really did my research and wrote a really solid sex worker character. Then I wanted to write a a real person with um, a job that she's very good at, but also a job that has bad days and, and better days. I think between the two of them, they do, you know, Echo is in love with both the idea of someone with whom she can explore anything she wants, but I think she also really likes Orly. I also wanted to leave the relationship a bit open. I didn't want to write a book where like, there's a love story and love solves everything, or, or good sex solves everything. So I, I wanted to leave it uh, a lot open for the reader to interpret. Is Echo healed at the end of the book? I think she succeeds in no longer being just an Echo, just somebody who bounces off other people. I think she is definitely well on her way to uh, finding or establishing her own sort of strong voice. And I think in terms of um, what she wants, yeah, I think she, I think she, I think she, uh, I think she's gonna get what she wants. <laughs>